Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on analyzing and interpreting data, level three relationship analysis. You can see right away that we've got a whiteboard. That means it's going to be that we're going to draw some relationships. And so when you're looking at data analysis and interpretation, you really almost need a pen because we're going to be looking at a lot of data sets in this. And so you want to be able to mark on it and figure out exactly what's going on in the data that was collected so we can interpret it. The first thing you want to do with your pen is to circle the data. Like what are we actually investigating? What does this data and set of data represent? We then wanna organize the data. We wanna kind of bring it all together. Once we've done that, then we wanna do some analysis. And when you're analyzing data, there's two things we do. We first look for patterns in the data, and then we start to look for relationships within the patterns in the data. And then finally, we interpret. We come up with some interpretation or what we think the data means, and then we use it to make predictions. So after you watch this video, you should be able to look at data sets and, and, and identify relationships in things like this study on study time and snacks that people were eating while they were studying. Or you could look at this data on a collision with a cart looking at energy. I'm going to start by showing you results from a study when you're looking at different modes of transportation and so I'll show you how I would do it and then you'll have a chance to do the same with a study that was looking at data on a city named Faradale. So let me clean this up, we'll get organized and then we'll get started. Okay, so the data that we have, it looks like a recent study was conducted by some middle school students and they were looking at different modes of transportation. And so when you're looking at data, especially a graph or you're looking at an article, I really would encourage you to use a pen so you can mark it up and figure out where are the most important things. So I can see right away that there are really four types of transportation. So the four types of transportation, we're looking at a bus, a car, a bike, and then it looks like uh, people walking. So those are important things as I look at the data. The next thing that we're looking at is the time for travel in each of these modes. So I can see those things that I circled over here. And those are on the y-axis. So it's car, bus, bike, and walk. So it looks like we're looking at the modes of transportation, but then we've got time of travel. And so what makes a graph, uh, a pen nice is you can circle what are the units. And so this is time to travel. And it looks like this is measured in minutes. And you can also highlight important things. So I could say, man, it looks like for this, it looks like walking, it took maybe 115 minutes versus biking, if I kind of draw a line down like that, that looks like it took maybe a little bit less. And so I don't know what kind of a time that would be, maybe, I don't know, something like 40 minutes. And so that's kind of what I use the pen to do is highlight important things as I look at the data. Um, the next bit of data I'm looking at, again, is transportation mode. So we already have those same things, car, bus, bike, and walk. And then it looks like they're looking at the amount of cost. So how much it costs for each of those. And then the final thing in the study is going to be the color. So it's going to be those same four things. And so in all of these, I could see we're really looking at that mode of transportation. And so as you look at data, you want to make sure that we're marking it up and we're highlighting the important data. But the big thing we want to do is we want to bring all this data get together. We want to organize the data. So right now I'm going to write what we're studying and then I'm going to show you uh, the startings of a data table chart. Okay, so the data that they're studying is modes of transportation. It's study data or the results of their study. Next thing I want to do is I want to organize this all in one chart. And a good way to do that in a chart is the thing that's included on each of the data tables. That should always be your first column. So let me show you that. So mode of transportation is going to be our first column. And so let me write in what those modes are. And then I would just go through the data. So we got a little bit of data on time travel, cost, and color. So those are going to be the other columns in my, in my data table. Let me fill that in. Okay. 
Okay, so now I've taken all of this data and I've kind of organized it onto one chart. So I can start to see the relationships between these. So I could get this out of the way. And then what I'm gonna start doing is I'm starting to look for patterns. What are the patterns that I notice as I start to analyze this data? Let me start to write a couple of patterns that I notice. Okay, so two patterns that I notice. Number one is this idea that the cars take the least amount of time, so that's 15 minutes, but they're also the most expensive. Also, I notice there's two free modes of transportation, and that is uh, biking and then walking, at least that's per trip. Next thing I want to do is I want to start looking at relationships. When you're looking at relationships, you're comparing different data sets. So I might compare, for example, mode and cost or time to travel and cost. So let me write a couple of relationships here. Okay, so a couple of relationships I notice is as time increases, so as time increases from 15 to 120 minutes, the cost per trip goes down from $10 to free. And so I'm comparing these two. Now, once you've done a little bit of the relationships, what you'll start to notice is we could really compare color to this or this to this. And so lots of times when you're doing that, I like to use a whiteboard and I like to think about what are all the relationships. And so I'm just gonna use the headings of this and describe those relationships. Okay, so the relationships that I've written is if you change your mode of transportation, that causes your time to change and also causes your cost to change. And so I drew an arrow in that direction because changing this causes that. Now, if you just happen to pay more, it doesn't cause you to take a mode of transportation. That's why the arrow goes in that direction. Also, I think there's a correlation between the two. Just because you take more time, it doesn't cause cost to change. It's just gonna be correlated with an increasing cost or a decreasing cost. And so now that I've done that, I've got some real good analysis, I've got the relationships, and so the last thing that I have to do is I have to interpret and make a prediction. So let me show you how to do that. So as I interpret the data, the big thing I said is that changing the mode of transportation causes a change in both time and cost. Also, this idea that cost and time are correlated when we look at the data. Okay, the last thing I have to do is I have to write a prediction. Okay, so the predictions that I wrote down is a motorcycle would have similar cost and time to a car, or another one could be changing your car color won't make it cheaper. And so the key thing you wanna do when you get a bunch of data is to mark up the data, figure out what are the numbers that I have, include those on a data table, then start looking for patterns, relationships, and then interpret. So what I'm gonna do is clean this all up, and then you're gonna have a chance to analyze some data sets of your own. Okay, for the next one, we have the results of a study on Veradale. So in a large study, scientists looked at different places from the center of Veradale City all the way to the subdivision called Celestia Valley. They wanted to see if there were any pattern, like how old people are, or how, many, how, how much houses cost, based on how close or far these places are from the city. So what I would encourage you to do is look at the data. We'll link it up in the slides down below then identify the data, organize the data, analyze it, and interpret the data. Then unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our analysis and interpretation are similar. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would look at these and I'd try to summarize what data are we looking at. So let me write that up here. The next thing I would do is I would go through each of the data and say, okay, what is similar between all of these? And looking at it, it looks like all of these are studying the distance to the city. And so that's gonna be, help me at least organize the, the data heads up here.
Okay, so the big things this data represents is the average age of the residents, also the average cost of the house, and then finally the tree type. And so for the next bit, what I would use is probably a pen because some of this I'm going to have to circle on the graph where it is. So let me figure out and, and fill out the rest of the data table. Okay, so now I've organized the data. So what I'm looking at, it looks like this study was looking at the distance from the city as it increased average age of residence, the house cost, and then the most common type of tree. So by synthesizing, putting all of this data together, I can start to look for patterns. So let me write a couple of patterns that I notice. Okay, so I notice uh, one pattern is that the age decreased as we moved away from the city from 52 as we were in uh, Veradale to 36 when we get to Celestial Valley. I also notice that the more expensive houses are going to be located closer to the, to the um, city. Next thing I want to look for are relationships. What are some interesting relationships that I find? Okay, so the thing that I noticed a couple is that as the age goes down, the cost goes down, or as the cost goes down, the age goes down. Also, I found there's a couple of locations, so looking at these two cities that have maple as the most common tree. So I'm starting to look at relationships between the two, but now I want to start thinking about, like, are any of these causes or are these any of these correlations? And so I want to start thinking about these big headings and how they're related to each other. So let me write them out and then start thinking about that. Okay, so the relationship that I wrote is, I think as you change the distance from the city, that's causing a change in the age. So the farther away, the younger the people are. And as you move farther away, the cost is gonna go down as well. And so why did I draw the arrow in that direction? I don't think if you change your age, you somehow change your distance, or you change your cost, you somehow change your distance. That's why the arrow goes in that direction. Also, there's a correlation between, and we notice that over here, that as the cost goes down, the average age goes down. So now that I've done a lot of that analysis, I need to do some interpretation. So let me write an interpretation. So what I wrote for an interpretation is increasing the distance from the city causes a decrease in the cost and also a decrease in the overall age and that younger people are correlated with less expensive houses. Now I need to make a prediction. Okay, so the prediction I wrote is that a subdivision seven kilometers from Veradale, so that'd be somewhere right in between these two subdivisions, would have a cost of around 620,000 and it would have an average age of residence of around 45. And so what we've done as we've done this is highlight data that we think is important, identifies patterns, relationships, and then interpreted the data. So now that you've done that, I've got a couple of other data sets you could look at down below. You could look at one on study time or even one that's a science example looking at energy. So that's how we look for relationships and that's how we look for relationship analysis to finally end up with interpretation. And I hope that's helpful.